So our work is about uh, verifying concurrent objects on the fair scheduling. Um, it's about verifying starvation freedom and dialog freedom of concurrent objects. And this is joint work with Xin Yufeng at USDC. So what's a concurrent object? A concurrent object is a shared data structure like a stack with some methods to access <coughs> this data structure. And the client of this object might contain several threads running in parallel and each thread could call the methods of this object. So this means the object method might be executed by several threads running in parallel, might be executed by several threads concurrently. So that's why we call it a concurrent object. And to verify this kind of concurrent object, we need to first know what's the correctness definition of a concurrent object. So in the textbook, we have the linear writability, which is about the functionality of concurrent objects. But linear writability doesn't talk about termination properties, whether the object methods will terminate or not. And for termination and liveness properties, we have many kinds of progress properties. We have block freedom, weight freedom, obstruction freedom for non-blocking algorithms, and starvation freedom and deadlock freedom for blocking algorithm, the algorithm using locks. And we already have many program logics to verify those non-blocking progress properties. So we are wondering if we can also have a program logic for starvation freedom and deadlock freedom. And here our starvation freedom and deadlock freedom are defined following earlier work. So if we have several threads running in parallel, then starvation freedom means if the execution is fair, then every thread will eventually finish its method call. And here, fair scheduling means every thread will get a chance to be executed. And dialog freedom is weaker. It means under fair scheduling, some of these threads can eventually finish its method call. So here, dialog freedom is actually a liveness property, a termination property. It will also disallow live lock. So we can see starvation freedom and dialog freedom both assume fair scheduling, and the difference is starvation freedom means every thread should progress on the fair scheduling, and dialog freedom here only requires whole system progress. So let's see an example. So it's a counter protected by a log. It's dialog free intuitively because it uses only one log, but it may not be starvation free. So for this client calling the method in this way, then the left method may never successfully acquire the log when the, the other thread always acquire the log ahead of the left thread. So the left thread, the left method may never terminate. It may starve. But it's still dialog free because the other thread will always finish its method call. The whole system keeps progressing. And actually, if the log is a fair log, like a ticket log or queue log, then this object it will be starvation free. So this is the difference between starvation freedom and dialog freedom. And what are the challenges for verifying starvation free and dialog free objects? So one of the challenges is the object implementations may take advantage of the fairness assumption which will introduce complicated interdependencies among threads. So suppose thread T is currently holding the log. Then if another thread T prime requests the log, then the T prime will be blocked. So whether the thread T prime can get the log eventually will depend on, will rely on thread T eventually release the log. And it's the fair scheduling ensuring that thread T will be scheduled to release the log. So this means the progress of one thread will rely on the, uh, the other threads doing something good, will rely on other threads' helps. And the fairness assumption ensures those good things will eventually happen. So, so this means on the fair scheduling, progress of one thread might rely on the progress of the other threads, and uh, uh, this may cause some kind of circularity problem. So let's see an example. So um, when these two threads are running in parallel, the loop of uh, thread T1 
will terminate only when thread T2 set Y to zero. And similarly, the loop of thread T2 will terminate only when thread T1 set X to zero. So this means there will be a deadlock. So when these two threads running in parallel, it's possible that neither of them will terminate. But we can use circular reasoning to incorrectly prove both of them terminate. So we can prove thread T1 will eventually set X to zero by relying on thread T2 eventually set Y to zero. And similarly prove thread T2 will set Y to zero by relying on thread T1 will eventually set X to zero. And uh, the rely condition of one thread is just the guarantee of the other thread. So we can use circular reasoning to incorrectly prove this, which means circular reasoning will be unsound for Leibniz proofs. So under fair scheduling, um, how to avoid this kind of circular, circular reasoning, how to break circularity when one thread progress will rely on other threads progress. And we have many other challenges. Um, for instance, here the object implementations doesn't rely on any built-in logs. They, the object may just use some ad hoc synchronization techniques. For, uh, for this earlier example, there, are, there is no logs, but, uh, when they, but it still has a dead log. So how to, get re how to avoid, how to prevent this kind of example? And also, as I just said, dead log freedom here will disallow live log. So it's actually a liveness property. It's not a safety property. So in earlier work, they usually just detect uh, circular waiting for logs. They actually treat dialog freedom as a safety property, which can't be applied here. And also for <coughs> some um, optimistic algorithm, they will use not only logs, but some rollback patterns. And this algorithm can't be verified using existing work. And also here we want to unify the reasoning about starvation freedom and dialog freedom. We want to provide only one set of inference rules to verify both properties. And this is never achieved before. So our contribution is we address these problems and propose a program logic. We call it Lily because it can verify both linear readability and Leibniz properties. And uh, uh, it's a unified program logic. We can use it to verify both uh, dialog freedom and starvation freedom. Um, we only provide one set of inference rules, and these rules can also be applied to log-free and weight-free algorithms. And we have applied our program logic to verify many algorithms, including some simple log log objects uh, protected by ticket logs, queue logs, test and set logs, and some queue algorithms and list algorithms. As far as we know, we are the first to verify salvation freedom of log coupling lists and dialogue freedom of optimistic list and lazy list. So to verify starvation freedom and dialogue freedom, uh, the key rule is to the, the rule for while loops, which ensures termination. And our rule is based on the standard how logic rule for total correctness. So to prove the loop will terminate, we just need to find some well-founded metric that will decrease at each round of loop. Then since the metric is well-founded, we know finally it can't decrease, then the loop should terminate. But this rule will be too strong in concurrent settings when there are environment interference that will affect termination. So for this example, this log can be implemented using a loop like this. Then if some other thread acquires log, the current thread will be blocked. Then it, it will be, we will be unable to find a decreasing metric here. So this means we need to relax this rule to take into account blocking in starvation-free and dialogue-free objects. And uh, um, to ensure progress properties, we need also this blocking is not permanent. So the loop metric may not need to decrease when the thread is blocking but uh, it's blocked, but the blocking should not be permanent. And our idea is to um, formulate this is from the 
uh, example of the counter using TT lock. So the TT lock example uh, is actually inspired by the cube management in banks. So it uses a shared variable called next, which corresponds to the ticket machine in the bank. Um, and every thread requesting the log will get its own ticket called I from this ticket machine. And it also uses a shared variable called serving, which is the ticket number that is currently being served. So the threads requesting the log will just form a queue in the order of their ticket number. And the head of this queue uh, of the, the thread will have the ticket number equaling to serving, and it can enter the critical section directly. The other thread will be blocked. They need to wait for the first thread to release the log. But this blocking is not permanent. <coughs> this algorithm is actually starvation free because first, the lock release action will eventually happen since the critical section always terminates. And secondly, the, each block thread only waits for a finite number of lock release actions. So each thread only waits for the earlier thread ahead of, the, ahead of it to release lock since the threads requesting lock form a queue. And our idea is to formulate this kind of um, uh, informal reasoning, we propose a special action called definite action. Uh, it's an action that will eventually happen regardless of the environment inference. And uh, for this ticket lock example, this definite action is just a lock release action. And uh, each block thread just waits for a finite number of definite actions from other threads. Then since every definite action will eventually happen, we know each block thread will eventually be unblocked, will eventually make progress. So there are no permanent blocking, so the, we can prove the algorithm will be salvation free. And in detail, so that action is a special action in this form, relating some uh, initial state satisfying P to some final state satisfying Q. And we call P is the enabled condition of this definite action. <coughs> And we call it a definite action because once this action is enabled, finally, eventually, the final state should the final state's Q will be reached regardless of the environment behaviors. And to prove if the definite action is indeed definite, we, just, we usually just need to prove the critical section will always terminate. And here we actually implicitly assume fair scheduling. So it's a fair scheduling ensuring that the current thread will be scheduled to reach the final state's queue. And to ensure starvation freedom, we also need to make sure each block thread only waits for a finite sequence of death actions. And when that sequence becomes empty, the thread will progress. So for this example, thread T3 is blocked, and the thread T1, uh, its tick number equals to serving, it can enter the critical section directly. So its, in, it's definite action is enabled initially. And the fair scheduling ensures that this definite action will eventually be finished. So thread T1 will eventually release the log. And once thread T1 release the log, uh, the thread T2's definite action will be enabled. Then thread T2 is guaranteed to finish its definite action which means thread T2 will eventually release the log, then thread T3 can get the log. So here, this is the uh, queue of the, the finite sequence of that action that thread T3 is waiting for, and the length of this sequence is a decreasing metric. So to summarize our basic ideas to handle this blocking is, as we said, the loop metric may not need to decrease when the thread is blocked, but the blocking should not be permanent, so we introduce the definite action ideas. We need the D sequence length to, in, to decrease. So, um, and we also need to verify that the definite action is indeed definite. And we have applied this rule to many salvation-free algorithms, uh, like log coupling. <coughs> 
but this rule will be too strong for dialog freedom. So here is a dialog free counter. It uses a Tyson set lock to protect the counter. So the lock error is available when it's zero, and each thread uses a cache instruction to acquire the lock. So this means um, the thread requesting the lock will just compete with each other. So it's possible that a thread will stop, but it still satisfies dialog freedom like we explained before. And here, the dialog free uh, counter will have blocking and also some kind of delay. So uh, if suppose thread T4 holds the lock, then thread T1 need to wait for the death action, which is the lock release action from T4. And after thread T4 finishes its death action, thread T1 will wait for an empty sequence of death action. So the lock will be available, but it doesn't mean that thread T1 can eventually get the lock because it might be delayed by another thread like T2. If T2 gets the lock first, then thread T1 will May, may fail to get the lock. And at this time, thread T1 will be blocked again. It needs to wait for the death action, the lock release action from T2. So this means during this execution, the sequence of death action, the length of the sequence will increase. So this breaks our uh, earlier death action idea. But it's okay for that death of free because um, since thread T2 gets locked first, this delay in thread T2 will progress first. It, it will finish its method first. And that log free will allow this kind of this sequence length to increase, but uh, it will require the delay threads come to an infinite number of delays without finishing method calls. <coughs> and uh, we, so we can elaborate our definition ideas to handle dialog free algorithm. So uh, the D sequence length could increase if the thread is delayed. And uh, to ensure dialog freedom, we need to ensure there are no infinite delays before the whole system progress. And the, the idea is to assign tokens and consume <coughs> one token for each delay in action. Since we only have a finite number of tokens, we know there will be only a finite number of delays. And these similar token ideas have already been used to verify log freedom. And we can also elaborate our loop group. Um, so to add this new clause here, um, so in, in the definition idea, we have uh, the loop metric may not need to decrease when the thread is blocked, but we need the D sequence length to decrease. And now um, the Loop metric and the D sequence loss, C sequence length may not decrease when the thread is delayed, but we need the number of tokens to decrease. And this rule can already be used to verify many dialog free and salvation free algorithms. So we can also handle something trickier. So in some optimistic list and lazy list, we have we not only have the locking, um, pattern, but also have the rollback pattern. So like this, in this uh, code, so uh, once thread locks a, locks a node, uh, it may later unlock the node and uh, roll back and retry. And it's still dialog free, but there will be, it will be much more challenging to verify. And we can actually also extend our work to verify this kind of example, so the details Will be seen. Will, will be found in our paper. And uh, so, the soundness of our logic just says if we can verify this judgment uh, using our logic, and here O is the concrete method implementation that we want to verify, and A is some abstract atomic specification, and then we will have this O a linearizable with respect to A. And the O is also dialog free. And uh, if the other specification satisfies some certain conditions, the O will also be starvation free. So in conclusion, we propose a program logic, we call it Lily. It can be used to verify both linearizability and lightness properties on the fair scheduling. And uh, to handle the blocking, we 
propose the deflection ideas and further elaborate it using the token ideas to handle delays in dialogue free algorithms. And we can actually classify these full progress properties using the blocking and the delay dimensions. And by ignoring either or both features to handle blocking delay, our program logic can be essentially to support all the full progress properties. So thank you. So I think it's great that um, we're actually working on total correctness in separation logics. But um, bearing in mind, perhaps very unfairly, um, Matt Parkinson's next 700 separation logics and the idea of trying to move towards a more general framework for separation logics instead of building new ones all the time. Um, I was wondering if it was possible to extend or maybe incorporate, um, sorry, em embed or incorporate the ideas behind Lily into a more general framework for separation logics? Yes, I think so. So we actually don't rely on any base logic here, so we can apply our ideas to any logics you like. Thank you. Thank you, it's very nice work. I have a question. So I assume you have a concurrent object which is parameterized by another concurrent object, like a universal construction. Can you establish conditional deadlock or starvation freedom for objects like that in your logic? Sorry, I don't understand your question. Okay, so let me reformulate. Can you prove a conditional deadlock or starvation freedom for high order concurrent objects? like iterators or universal constructions. Yeah. Okay, you mean that's the object, so we can actually verify the inner object using some atomic specification and uh, uh, replace the object implementation using this <coughs> atomic specification in the outer object and then verify the outer object. All right, thanks. <clears throat> 